Hello and welcome back to the second part of the exercise. Or in the time where I wasn't recorded, recording, I went ahead and I introduced a little bit more line work to the drawing. As you can see, you know, I didn't really follow the sketch exactly. Sometimes when you start doing some precision drawing and things that you thought will make sense on a sketch, they don't really make that much sense anymore. And it helps also to sometimes turn it off and on again just to see how it works without it. You can also freeze the layer completely to have a look at the geometry without any underlying sketches. So this is roughly what I have. Mm, judging by the color, you can also verify here everything is saved on the same layer, okay, your sketch lines in, in my case. And I'm still in the drafting and annotation workspace. So this is something that I ask you to do in the meantime, after we have finished the, the first recording of the first video. Okay. So going, going back to our to-do list for today, we have covered five points so far, and now we're actually moving to the civil 3D functionality. And going back to the program, you can see that if we switch back to or go to our drop down menu where we can select different workspaces, one of them is called Civil 3D. So just like that, go over there and then we'll be presented with a different set of tools that are specific for train modeling. Mostly there's also some associated with some you know, gravity pipe networks and maybe some parcel lines, feature lines, all of these. Don't necessarily make too much sense at the moment, but we'll start worrying about them when we get there. So let's start with the first um, import process. So far we have imported our contour lines and our building outlines and a geotooth file. Now we would like to import the actual text files with our data. So I have them saved in our under data. And you can see when we open the, the file in a notepad environment, we can see that we have, let me scroll all the way to the bottom, 117,000 entries. And from experience, I know that this is going to be bogging down the interface and will slow down AutoCAD to a point where it will be almost unusable. So what I did is I decimated this. You can also check that it's like one tenth of the of the file size. I have the same data set where if I scroll all the way down, you can see it's only 14,600 points. And I did that just to show you how you can work with points in, in Civil 3D without slowing it down. So please also use this decimated data set for, for the exercise. So what we need to do is under the home tab, under create ground data uh, tab, we select the points menu and then the first one point creation tools. And then it will be presented with yet another menu. And then the, like the last button to the right, import points, that's the one that we want to click. And then first we need to choose a file where to import it from. So we click on this add files button over here we navigate to our folder, in my case, it's already there, desktop geodesign data, and then I'm making sure that I'm taking the XYZ decimated TXT file. If for whatever reason you cannot see them, make sure that you have under the drop down you have all files selected. So XYZ decimated, open this one, and then the menu populates with different formats that are available to us. And then, so we need to tell Super 3 d how to import this data. What is it that it actually means? And we know that it's X, Y, and Z. In our case, X uh, corresponds to easting, northing would be Y, and Z is point elevation. So these are templates that we're telling Super 3 d and then it's already trying to guess which one is it that we have. Scroll down a little bit and select E and Z, easting, northing elevation, you can see that it flipped over here. Then one more thing that uh, I would like you to do over here is we want to select 
and these um, the tech box over here which says add points to the point group yours is probably empty uh, so you don't have anything on the drop down just click on this one the plus one and then call it let's say existing ground um, hit ok leave these checked off hit ok again and then even though i have decimated the data set and essentially we're looking only at 10 percent of the initial density of the points it's still going to take silver so 3d at least on my machine up to I don't know, 20, 30 second process. So it, your mileage may, may vary depending on, on, the, on how powerful your machines are. It might mm, pop up faster or slower. So we can close out of this little menu over here. And now when we zoom in, we can see that all these points have been shown to us. And then first thing that we can do right now is Maybe it's a little bit you know, too difficult to read here. So on the, on the bottom right over here, you can see that there is different scales available, available to us. So if we choose, for example, one to 250 scale and give it again like five to 10 seconds to update, we will see that all these points are being displayed in a, essentially a, a bigger font, a larger font, which, for you, by default, it might actually start with one to thousand, so you might be quite overwhelmed with the uh, the actual annotation that's being shown to you, right? It may look something like that. So if you want to make sense of this mess, just go down to here, uh, change your annotation scale, and I find one to hundred to work quite nicely. And then again, like each change takes anything between five to say ten seconds. Mind you, it still needs to change each time. It needs to change 16,000 points. Okay, what do these numbers actually re represent, right? So we have these 6.78, 705, 697. So this is most probably the, the elevation of the point. This is where the point actually is. It's marked by this, this X symbol. <clears throat> and the 42599, <clears throat> excuse me, these, I'm not really sure what these are, right? Uh, when I click on that, Kogo point, I can see under the information that it's a point number that it refers to. So um, that's why I always keep my properties panel open so that I can click on things and then understand what it is that uh, that some of these presenting me with. If I want to change the appearance of these, what I need to do is I need to click on this big button here over here, tool space, and it shows me another menu where I have access to civil for these specific tools. So under, um, I'm not going to walk you through all of these right now, just, you know, let's focus on the ones that are important at the moment and then we'll gradually develop a better understanding of, of what's going on under the hood. So each of these menus has a little plus button over here when there's some information embedded on it. So if I click on this plus, it actually you know, Twitter's open another menu with a list of point groups in this case that are there uh, in the drawing. And you can see <clears throat> there's an EG point group that I created before, and you can see it has zero points. And I can tell it as well because there is no black dot over here. So it means that there is a group, a container, if you will, but it's empty. Whereas this one over here has this black dot. When I hover over it, it was going to tell me that it has 14,620 points, and then you can see the list of them over here uh, below. So if I right click on it and then select properties, I'm able to actually change the label. So what it's telling me is that my default, default style for the point marker is basic, and my label style, which is everything that's written over here to the right of it, says it's point and point number and elevation and description. So what we can do is, for example, we're not interested in the point number, we're only interested in the elevation, so we can select elevation only and hit apply. Give it a moment and then it should update in a second. So, so all these 14,000 points have been updated. And if you want to change the point style over here, 
you could either scroll through the list and, and try to find something that you know, uh, that might be different. So let's say with a gas valve, let's see how this one looks like. Hit apply, wait for it to update, and you can see that there is some different predefined symbols that if you wanted to represent in this way, we could. But let's go back to basic, and then if we hit one of uh, the button right next to the right, twirl it open, say edit current selection, we can actually change the display of it. So let's say we don't really like the X, we would like it to be represented by a circle and an X, that's what we would do. Select over here, okay, okay. Give it a moment and then we'll have uh, our points shown in this, this way. Okay. So now we can we can see that um, again this is definitely a tin <laughs> data set. Remember, we have an unequal distribution of points. It's not a raster data set that we have exported. And then so what we'll do in a second is we're going to triangulate between these points. <clears throat> but remember, right now we're only looking at one tenth of the actual data. So, and the only reason for that is that so 3D has issues, difficulties trying to display all these labels for all individual points. So what we could do is we can either delete all these points from the existing ground, or what we could just do is we could go into properties and essentially change the display to none and none, and then hit OK, and now it disappeared. So the points are still there, they are just invisible. And it's a good moment to, to save um, at, this, at this point in time so that we don't lose the changes that we have introduced. So we have gone through importing points, annotating, uh, changing the annotation, changing the symbols and tags, and also changing the display scale over there. Now we would actually want to create an existing ground surface. And now that we have these points over here, we want to create a surface and potentially make a link to either this decimated data set from the drawing, or we could actually link it to the external file, and this is what we're going to do. So a lot of the things in Civil 3D, uh, what I'm going to show you how to work with surfaces, but then this translates to a lot of other features that you are going to be creating. So you can see that there is no option to twirl this one open. It's only a surface, it's an empty container. So what I need to do is I right click on it and I need to tell Super 3D to create a surface. And it's going to ask me a few few things over here, like you know, what's its name, let's just call it EG for existing ground. Or it's going to do description, leave it like that, the style and render material, we'll get back to in a second. So we just accept the default. And then now you can see that I can twirl this one open and then there is this EG surface and I can twirl this one open. And then again, there's like a few things and then I can also twirl this one open, right? So there's like a cascading menu over here. But essentially what, it, what Civil 3D has done is it has created an empty surface. So again, a container that could be constructed using these 10 or 12 input kind of data. And uh, right now, None of them have information. So you see, there is no black dot like we can see here. None of them has anything. So it's essentially an empty surface. It's It has potential, but has, has zero data. So for it to exist, what we could do is we can either say, let's just create it out of the point groups. So we just hit right click and add. And then which point group do we actually want to add to this? We have this existing ground point group that we have created. Let's hit OK. And then you can see immediately that something happened, right? There is a, uh, these contour lines have appeared and there's this green outline over here that you can see. And I right click on it in the properties panel, I can see that it's a tin surface. You can see it also over here that we it, it has registered these points and it has a style of contours, two meters and 10 meters. This is what we, we, what we have selected. So this is, Let's just switch to something that's a little bit more tight. Now we can see more contour lines. And here, this is the familiar bridge. And we can recognize some of the features that we have seen in the drawing. Still, this is, this is a very coarse representation, one and five meter contours. 
so what we can do is we can either go into this style drop down over here or we can um, we can right click on the existing ground surface over here and click surface properties and it's going to take us to the properties tab or, or menu for the surfaces and here we can we have exactly the same drop down and what, what we could try and do is select this contours and triangles style hit ok and then we'll be presented with this mesh representation so we can see all the triangles connecting different points over here and um, also on top of these triangles it, it's in the name uh, you can also see these contour lines over here what if we only wanted to see the triangles without any any contour lines um, let's just go uh, yet another way to uh, to access the same menu if i select surface i can see that in the properties panel i'm also presented with a context sensitive ribbon menu on top so i can just hit surface properties over here and i can see maybe is there a a display style that allows me to to display only triangles and I can't really see it here so what I can do is I can right click on the small triangle over there and say create new style and under information let's just give it a name triangles and then under the display tab what I need to do is I just need to tell server 3d to actually display these triangles right now everything is is set to off by default except for the border so I want it to be visible which color cyan let's accept cyan and here there's a, a little bit of a quirk of silver 3d that you need to pay attention to so there's this selection over here that's called view direction and it by default it's uh, it chooses plan but what I need to do is I need to choose model and then model I need to make sure that my triangles are also on and they are on by default so let's just apply that apply hit OK and then now we have this uh, very cyan looking representation of the terrain to make sure that again we we have made everything correctly and then there's no errors in the data set just right click on it and then we want to view this um, this surface from from an angle so remember we can just go to an isometric view and here this is an arrow that was resulting from from our buildings so we don't care about that but there's no other errors and i can orbit around it and i can see that there is uh it's actually a 3d terrain model that we're working with what helps with this kind of data is to switch from a 2d wireframe wireframe is just a uh, it's just telling you that we only see the wires the edges connecting different points if i click on the name and then choose a shaded display style then you would be able to see the the actual faces of the triangles as well and uh, and then now you can verify that we're actually working with a three-dimensional data set that appears to be in a correct position as well but one, one thing that we can immediately see is that it's it's quite coarse, you know, like all the trouble that we went into and then we have this uh, this very detailed representation of the terrain and then we actually lost 90% of the points uh, in the process because we had not imported them and then here we, we have very coarse representation of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, to actually rename this to e.g. decimated just to keep it for for a later comparison and I'm going to right click and then create another surface and I'm going to call this one e.g. let's say full and um, I want to change its display style to the one that I just created so my triangle okay okay and maybe select the one that's decimated and for now I want to turn off so I, I just select border only and um, let's just go back to wireframe and this is my eg decimated I will, it's 
so like border only. Uh -huh. So what we're looking at is probably a display grid glitch. So let me just region all or change the view to top view. Exactly. And now, uh, now it disappears. What we want to do now is we want to populate our, oh, I have not created a surface, sorry. So create a surface, BG, full style triangles. Okay, okay, it was there, it just disappeared. So let me just delete that and keep only one copy of that. Okay, but again, the same drill. Uh, we tw twirl everything open and we're looking for the data that we actually want to import. And rather than importing a point group, we can link it to an external point file. So let's just hit add. Let's uh, again plus button and let's navigate this time to the full big 7 MB, 6 MB uh, file. So hit open and the same thing. It's not northing, easting elevation. It's actually easting, northing elevation in our case. And we just hit OK. And you can see, even though it's 10 times more points, it imported the, them all of them immediately because they are never part of the drawing. They don't have to be um, displayed individually. They, they just serve as, as the points that triangles need to link. And you can see, hopefully, if I, if I go to my perspective view, so again, over here, South, east, and then let's just change that to shaded. Give it a moment. Update. And uh -huh. now I know what's going on. There's two surfaces actually over here. So I just need to change the decimated one to a display style, no display, and now it disappears. And now you can see, uh, let me just rotate it inward so that we uh, we're at the same point here. Now I got lost for a second. Bear with me. Oh. Here. Uh, now you can see that the resolution of the data set is much higher than the one that we had in the decimated one, while still maintaining perfect um, response time from the viewport. Okay, let's go back to top. Let's go back to uh, 2D wireframe. And then another trick that uh, that works out quite well is that when you select objects and then you right click somewhere outside of any object and then go to object viewer, it's going to open this three dimensional window, external window where you're, it's a little bit more optimized for 3D viewing. And then here you can just navigate through clicking with your left mouse button, you're, you're orbiting by default and then you can, you can see um, your geometry from different angles. And you can also switch between different types of visualization. So this is shades of gray, you know, conceptual will uh, create some, some fake shadows as well. And if you go to 3D wireframe, it would look exactly the same as in the viewport. And you can also try different, I don't know, shade X-ray. Some of them take a little bit longer to render and then they slow your computer down, but just try these out. And I really like the shaded uh, or shades of gray. These two, they help me a lot to understand what's going on. Okay, so we have um, imported our data. We have created a new style, display style, you know, change between contours and triangles. But what if we actually want to see a little bit different kind of information? So again, we can go to surface properties and then choose maybe one of the predefined styles over here, elevation bending, and let's just hit apply and see what it does, right? So what it allows us to do is allow it uh, color codes the, the mesh according to its elevation. And then we can see that the, the red spots are the lowest areas and the, the blue ones would be the highest and the gradient in between is there. Um, so again, I can, I can actually influence this um, from, from three different points. Either I select the surface and go to this context sensitive menu, surface properties, or I can choose it from this drop down, 
or I can just right click on this name, surface properties, and they are doing exactly the same thing. So let's go back to maybe a slope bending. Hit apply, and then here, okay, if we click OK to deselect that. And you can see now it's uh, a slope analysis running on every single face of, um, of the mesh. Okay, uh, but for, for work or when we're designing things, it's, it's actually best to have the triangles over here. One thing that I might do for the purpose of this exercise is I would just change the under edit current style triangles display triangles or just change the color from cyan to maybe something a little bit easier on the eyes so it doesn't doesn't pop that much okay and now we can understand this our terrain i can select it right click outside of anything display order send it to back so that we can actually see our geometry perfect and now let's look at annotation um, how we can um, add some some information to the to the surface right what if we want to understand what's going on here so first of all we can click the, the surface and then again this context sensitive menu is going to change and give us some options so I can add some labels over here so click on that and then it will tell me which kind of labels I'm able to add so let's uh, let's say add surface labels and um, let's let's uh, sorry skip that let's go to spot elevation what it uh, then we just need to read what it asks me to do and says select a point so i can just click 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 and wherever i click uh, it creates an annotation label and it's a sur surface elevation label and it's an it's a dynamic object, so you can see when I move it around, it actually samples the elevation from the surface, right? And so let me go to the hill over here, here. So now we're at 779, seven, six meters, five meters, 70, and so on. So it's a very dynamic object that, that can be moved around and, uh, and sampled. And the same principle holds if this, for example, would be a little bit too small for you to read, you can just go to one to 250, and it's going to increase the size of the labels. If the um, uh, sorry, the triangles are getting in the way, just switch it to a say, different display style. It's still the surface is still there. It's still selectable. I can click on it, but it's just using a different style, different representation. But still, each time I move this around, I can I can see the the label change. Next kind of label, again, so I sel I'm selecting the contour line that represents my surface. I'm adding labels and I want to add some slope labels. And then the first thing here is um, create slope labels. And I have an option to choose between one point and two point. One point is essentially fairly useless. You would hardly ever use that. Always go for two point. And then it says, okay, what's my first point? So from here to there, right? And then uh, I have created a slope label that again is is dynamic. So I can say, okay, from this point to that point, I have a slope of minus almost 40 over one. So this is run over rise. It's one way of displaying um, displaying slopes. And you can see it here under the properties panel when I it's important to have only one type of geometry selected so if I select both of these it will just tell me that I have two but I cannot really access their individual options but if I select only the slope label then I have control over it and then rather than run over rise I can say actually I'm, I'm more used to displaying this information in percent so it's two and a half percent and then we could verify that and say okay so this point over here and this point over there you know this is higher than that so it makes sense that uh, because the arrow is pointing in this direction it says it's minus two and a half percent if we were going from here to there it would say two and a half percent but positive so plus not minus here and and we cannot 
also just copy this using regular uh, copy command. So if I just copy this slope arrow and then I can change it, it will always sample the um, existing ground full surface that we have added it to. And then this information is always going to be true, no matter where you are. The same thing would be true for your points. So CO for copy, and I can just move it anywhere I want. And the moment I hit um, update, then it's going to show the, the updated elevation information. Okay, what if I want to delete these? Right? Um, they they live on, on a layer, C double text. So I could either select things by layer or I could just select one right click and say select similar. Then it's going to select all the uh, spot elevations, delete them, get rid of them. The same thing is true for, for my slope arrows. Right, I select one, right click, select similar, get rid of all. To make things, um, sometimes you, you, know, you need to have a more regular grid of annotations and then rather than clicking on 50 times or 100 times and placing your points you can do um, a, a more um, automated approach so again I selected a surface I'm going to add labels spot elevations on grid it's going to ask me for a grid base point so I just let's just choose it over here for example randomly what's the rotation I just, just accept zero as default What's the X spacing, let's say five, Y spacing again, five, and then what is the upper right location for the grid? Let's say it will be over here. So this is the preview of the grid. Am I happy with that? Yes, I am. And now the software is, is actually you know, populating this rectangle and it's taking its time to do it. It's going to take it uh, a few seconds to, to complete. And like every single uh, point that falls within the grid will be converted to a spot elevation. So you can see it now, you know, everywhere uh, I have this very detailed information that uh, yeah, might be useful for, for some plant production. Again, if I want to delete that, just select one, select similar. It might slow down your system for a second, might, might make it a little bit unresponsive. You can see here it's 6,600 of these. Hit delete and then get rid of them. Okay, I think we have covered all this. Mm, we looked at the object viewer already, so we're very good on time. And then now we can actually uh, create something that, you know, so far we, we've been only working with um, the existing ground. Oh, I believe I have just deleted my. Uh, I had I had my surface selected as well, and then I deleted my surface by accident, rather than only the its labels. So what I just did is I undid um, the the erase command. Exactly. So I just make sure that my eg4 is in there. And I only want to select my surface elevation label, select similar. And this is now only these, 6,500 of them. Give it a moment to, to process it, hit delete. And now after a few more seconds, I should be able to, to continue uh, working with that. Okay, so I have my um, EG4 and then for the sake of clarity, I'll just right click on EG decimated and delete that um, because we don't really want that. And then right click on my EG4 surface properties and just change it to EG, which stands for existing ground. And then what I would like to do is start doing a finished ground or proposed ground surface. So essentially creating some designs. And then the way I would do that is, again, I need to create it. So right click on surfaces create surface and here I would say uh, FG for finished ground and let's say platform. This is the easiest one that, that we can work with. So FG platform, we have created again, just a container at the moment it's empty where we need to store our data. And I would like to convert this particular 
you know, platform that has this triangular shape over here. For me, this is, I envision it to be a flat platform. Everything over here is flat. Um, so I want one, two, three of these vertices to be at the same elevation. And then, so looking at the kinds of data that go into mm, any definition of a surface, then I'm just going through them and then thinking, okay, what do I know here, right? So I, we've gone through points and uh, both files and groups. And this is something that, you know, sure there is three points, but I'm also care about the connections between them, right? So it wouldn't be this. It could, is it a contour line? Well, it could be, but it's, you know, not really. Uh, it's something that Civil 3D understands on, uh, or, or sees as a break line. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to create this or add this break line to the definition of my surface. But at the moment when I look at it, the elevation of, of this polyline is zero. Uh, and if I just add a few spot elevations to my surface, I can see that the surrounding existing terrain lies anywhere between 548 and 587. So we could say that on average, everything here is at five, uh, let's say 570. And so what I would like to do is I would like to assign an elevation to this particular uh, polyline and just move it to 570. So under the geometry tab elevation, I'm just changing it to 5.7. And now what I can do is I can just under my finished on platform, I can go into the definition tab, break lines, right click on it, say add, and it's going to ask me for a description, what kind of type is that, all these things. At the moment, we don't care about it. We just accept the default and say, just let me select the line that I drew, hit OK. And immediately what you can see is that it has created a thin surface that has this, uh, the, the, the style of a triangle and it has some definition there. And when I right click and go to the object viewer, I can see that it actually has, well, there is one triangle over there, right? So we have successfully created something that's a design uh, feature. And then we can just select this one and create another style. So I just go here under create edit, triangles, create, uh, let's create new. And then let's just say, call it triangles proposed. And then just change the display to here, plan and cyan. Okay, perfect. So this way I'm able to change the triangles proposed and this one. So now I'm selecting two elements. One is the surface, the, other, the existing ground surface. The other one is the finished ground surface. And I, after I have selected both of these, I'm going to the object viewer and let's just go to shade it. And here you can see that I actually have successfully created this surface that, you know, here it's a little bit higher than the existing ground and here it's a little bit lower than the existing ground. And I can see it also from underneath that it's the opposite here, it's visible, there it's visible, right? So at the moment, there is no real con connection between these. But it's a first step where um, where we have created some geometry that has not existed before. And um, this will be it for this exercise. So what I would like you to do is, is to definitely get familiar with the user inter interface, um, familiar with creating these annotation lines. So for example, right now when I create and select my surface, I need to make sure that I'm selecting the right one. So this is my FG platform. I can also add um, annotation to it. And then all of these will be exactly at 570 because we, we only have one, two, three vertices. And this platform is perfectly flat, exactly as I wanted it to be. Just to uh, verify that again, I can add a label of a slope. And remember, two point slope. So it should be zero if we did, any, uh, did everything correctly, right? It says it's horizontal 
in all possible directions. So we have uh, we have successfully created a surface that um, corresponds to to our requirements for a platform. And I would like you to um, again like try these things out, put some annotation in, create your own styles. Maybe you know remove the el portion of uh, of the the label over here, change the symbol. Um, Put, put in some some spot elevations, work with your polylines. They have to be, uh, in this case, uh, just need to select uh, it correctly. It has to be a closed polyline for it to work. And then act, add them as break lines to your different, um, different designs. If I was to uh, do the same thing for uh, for another polyline, I would create another surface, an external, I would then call it FG, whatever, uh, parking lot, for example. And then into this parking lot, I would have added another closed polyline just to represent it as a separate surface. And you will, I'll explain a little bit later in a week from now, why is it important to have these. Another thing is if you're working with a spline like that and you want to create, uh, you know what, let's just go through it together. So um, I'll just rename that so it's not a FG platform parking lot, let's just call it FG island. And uh, because this is the spline over here is supposed to represent an island. What I would like to do now is I would like to add this or assign elevation to this. Uh, to the spline, and because it's a spline, I cannot do that, right? It doesn't it doesn't have this option. And also, if I wanted to add it as a break line to my FG island, and I uh, accept all the defaults here, and I just click, okay, it it worked, but where is that now, right? It's at zero, so I cannot really control the the elevation of um, of this. Um, this geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that uh, or let's just twirl this one open, break lines, break line set, right click on it and delete. Okay. And then what it does, it sort of invalidates the surface giving me this exclamation mark, but it doesn't delete anything from here. What I need to do is I need to right click on it and say rebuild. So now it just rebuilt it without any information. So it's empty again. So to be able to uh, to change the elevation of a, of a spline, what I need to do is I need to actually convert it to a polyline. And then how would I do it? I would just go P edit for polyline edit. And then it asks me, do I want to turn it into one? Yes, confirm. What's a precision level? And then it's essentially like how tight is it going to represent it? How accurate is going to be the new representation? I'll say 10. Uh, and then accept another option. And right now I can see that it's a polyline that has tons of vertices, but it's a fairly accurate representation. But now I can actually move it to the elevation, to the desired elevation. What would it be? In my case, I just need to look it up quickly. Spot the elevation here, 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 here. Mm, okay, so it's what, let's say, yeah, let's put it, I want it to be an island sticking out maybe i'll just put it six meters um so i just move the whole thing to six meters that's my island again twirl open the definition break line and accept the defaults just like that and then we have you see now there's more triangles over here because there's also more points right click on it and i we have successfully created a an island so now we can just select this one, right click, select similar. It's going to, uh, I thought it's going to select multiple surfaces, but it doesn't. So I just select this one, select this one, and select this one so that we can bring them all in. And you can see here, I have three surfaces right now. One is my existing ground and I have my FG triangle platform and I have my FG island that at the moment are floating in the air, but this is how we are gradually working 
ourselves through it. Okay, so what I would like you to do uh, now is to go through all your you know, flat features and then create these surfaces as or add them to separate surfaces over here, name them in the way that makes sense for you, create different display styles, uh, troubleshoot things in the object viewer, and then just go through, through it step by step to, uh, to translate all your sketches into all your closed sketches to surfaces. We're not addressing any linear features like paths just now. Okay, good luck.